Welcome to Community Focus with Lisa Phillips, where we shine a spotlight on the community and more. I'm your host, Singin' Lisa. I'm glad you're here. The Louisiana National Guard Youth Challenge Program, or YCP, is a free alternative 22-week residential quasi-military educational program for at-risk youth aged 16 to 18. Stephen Hurley, Director of Public Relations and Recruiting for Louisiana National Guard Youth Challenge Program, is here today. He's my guest and I'm excited to learn all about what is going on. How are you today? Hey, Lisa, I'm good. How are you today? I'm doing great, and I'm great. excited to learn when it comes to the youth because there is so yeah. much that they have potential for, and mm -hmm. then and we definitely want to offer opportunities for them to gain more information and experience for mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, the best life they can have. So Absolutely. the National Guard Youth Challenge, that is uh, that sounds very militaristic and oh. like they're going <laughs> to get it done. But share with us when the program began and what was the catalyst that's been? Sure. Well, thanks for having me on. Uh, so the National Guard Youth Challenge Program, we've been around for over 25 years. Uh, we st Again, we started uh, about 25 years ago. The uh, Department of Defense saw a need for a program to help young people out who were dropping out of school. They noticed there was a lot of kids, and it became a homeland safety issue, right? Because these kids, we had so many kids, they didn't have anywhere to go. They were on the streets. They had dropped out of school. Uh, so they developed about 10 pilot programs back in the early 90s, and Louisiana was actually one of those pilot programs, and now there's over 40 youth challenge programs in the nation. So that's kind of how that started. We have three here in Louisiana. Uh, we're always interviewing for each location. So we are a, again, 22-week quasi-military program for young people aged 16 to 18 who are at risk. And when we say at risk, they might be struggling in school. They might have, they might be at risk for dropping out of school. They might have already dropped out of school. They might just be getting bullied. School might not be for them. Uh, they might have been in some, you know, they might have some discipline issues. So we take we take those age group of 16 to 18 year old young people in any demographic who have struggled in their current environment, and we put them in a 22 week structured quasi military program where they work towards life coping skills and education. Now we are not a boot camp, and that's kind of what. It's kind of a misconception, mm -hmm. right, of what a lot of uh, families think we are, is I want to put my son, my daughter, grandson, granddaughter in boot camp. Okay, well, this isn't a boot camp, but it's highly structured. It's a highly structured military program. So there's discipline, there's expectations, uh, there's reward, you know, there's, um, they live in a barracks style uh, dormitory, open barracks, just like you would in the military. So the military aspect that plays into it, that's kind of our success, right, because they're going to have this routine, this structure, day to day, they know exactly what they're going to do. So they have that that structure and those life coping skills they learn, but they also earn their education. They can work towards a GED, which used to be called, uh, what is now called the high set. Mm -hmm. So they work towards the high school equivalency test, it used to be called the GED. They can also earn free technical college credits, and we also offer a few different educational pathways. But that's kind of everything in a nutshell. We're a free 22-week quasi-military program for young people 16 to 18 that are struggling. They learn life coping skills and learn education. Wow, that's that's fantastic. And uh, I can see where a parent would say, yes, sign my kid up because they hear military, they hear the structure. And you said something that was key. Uh, was there research that said the ages 16 to 18 were the ages that mm -hmm. it seemed to be most uh, tr problematic? Yeah, absolutely. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they're a little bit older at that point. They're starting to... Uh, be a little more independent in their thinking, no, no matter if they're right or wrong, they're still going to think they're right. Mm -hmm. But uh, those, those 16, 18 year old, that, that age rating is critical. I can guarantee you every listener out there right now knows someone 16, 18, first, second or third hand, maybe that is struggling. You know, they don't want to go to school. They don't want to do their work. They don't want to listen. So we're not a place for bad kids. We're a place for these kids who are struggling to come and turn their lives around to learn discipline, to learn expectations, to learn how to take care of themselves, to learn how to be good citizens. We teach them everything they need to know to have that successful foundation all while earning their education. So again, this is a free program. This is something offered by your government and, and your state government to, to help these families and these young people get to that next phase in life. Those families that are just struggling with that young person who doesn't 
want to want to be successful or just have you're struggling to be successful sure. and it really does say a lot uh, about uh, a resource because that mm-hmm. is sometimes what is most missing in families who really don't know what to do when they do have that 16 18 year old who really is at an age of really discovering who they are mm-hmm. they don't know they think they're right but they've just got a thousand different directions yeah. that they're headed in trying to figure yeah. out uh, their life and and identify with who they think they are at that time and so this sounds really great to allow uh, structure to help them really calm down and maybe yeah. focus on what actually needs to happen for them so they can figure out who they really are, are best uh, to be. So how does uh, the young person get involved in the program? What does it take to get uh, started? So it's super easy. Again, we're a free program, so we interview all throughout the state and multiple times, especially in the greater New Orleans area. Uh, so what we ask everyone to do is call us at 1-800-CAMP-KID or visit us at langycp.com to submit an application. But the minimum requirements is being 16 to 18, and you have to attend an interview. So we're going to have interviews coming up on the in the North Shore area uh, and in Marrero. So Covington, Wednesday, March 11th at 10 a.m., and Marrero, Saturday, March 14th at 10 a.m. This is going to be for the April 19th Gillis Long class. So all those families listening out there right now, you want your young person to attend. This is the class that you want to go to. Gillis Long is about 20 minutes outside of Baton Rouge. So it's not too far away from here. Uh, It's going to be the April 19th class. Now is a good year because a good time of year because a lot of these families are seeing that their young person, it's past, you know, it's going towards the end of the school year. This young person, they've had no change. They're still failing school. They're still struggling to get their work completed. Uh, There hasn't been any improvement from where they were to the start. They might have been struggling in the past. So now is a good time to interview, whether you're in the North Shore area or you're in the or you're right in New Orleans in the Marrero area. We're going to be interviewing again 1-800-CAMP-KID or L-A-N-G-Y-C-P dot com. And we're extremely active on Facebook at Louisiana National Guard Youth Challenge Program. You can see pictures of what we do. There's tons of activities. There's intramural sports. I think one big thing I want to continue to stress is this is not a punishment. This is not a prison. This is not a place for bad kids this is a place for these kids to come get physically mentally strong to learn how to be a good citizen to learn life coping skills and to get that all important uh, high set or, or yeah. GED. Yeah, that's really one of the biggest uh, benefits I hear you saying about the high set because you have to have that just to move on to the next level yeah. uh, in your life, no matter what that might be. And so I love what you all are offering when it comes to the structure and you seem to have it uh, really laid out. And now do the students give feedback on what may work best for them and you yeah. guys get a chance mm-hmm. to maybe tweak that a little bit? Yeah, well, you, you know what's crazy, Lisa, is we the number one thing we get from when we're we're at graduation and mom and dad are there or whoever the guardian is there mm-hmm. and you know they're in their cap and gown and we say okay you know kind of a, what's one last thing you you would want you know if mm-hmm. you could if you were king to for a day or queen for a day what would you change and they always say more discipline which is crazy you know a lot of people don't believe us but <laughs> when they get there they thrive off of that structure and that routine they know exactly what they're going to do every day they know they're going to have three awesome square meals every single day they're going to have exercise they're going to go to school they're going to get to do intramural sports um they there there's a routine and that's what uh is kind of at the core of our success and kind of where the military piece plays in because anyone who's familiar with the military you know how much of a a, a routine everything is and, mm-hmm. and how much structure there is so that's a huge part of our success and kind of the um the the piece the quasi-military piece how it plays in mm-hmm. but uh yeah it, it's amazing to 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 kind of hear some of the input from a lot of cadets because, I mean, more discipline's the last thing you would think they would throw out there. Yeah, and then that's at the end of the program. So walk us through how uh, a, a day in the life of, of a participant there and, and how they first start, what, you know, their attitude in the beginning, and then, like you said, in the end, uh, you see something that you didn't expect. Yeah, so, there's a, so usually there is a two-week acclimation period what what we call and at that point they're candidates so they kind of go through the ropes and learn everything and it's always the toughest period uh then after those two weeks they graduate to become cadets so once they're a cadet they'll start being able to make a phone call every sunday to uh, a family member they'll be able to write letters as much as they want um so then during those course the rest of the program they, that's when they kind of start school and they kind of start the structure. They wake up at five every morning. They, they uh, do health, hygiene, physical fitness, 
breakfast. They're going to go to school. And then after they finish school in the afternoon, uh, of course, they're going to have lunch between there. And after they finish school, they'll have more, uh, more PT or intramural sports. And then after that, they'll have dinner. Uh, they might have a few other activities. And then it's lights out at about 9 o'clock. Uh, we do community involvement projects on the weekend. So it's not like picking up trash on a highway. They do they do 40 hours of community uh, service for per each cadet. So, again, this isn't like a punishment. It's not picking up trash on the highway kind of thing. It's community involvement. So they're going to get out and help build gardens or, or do things like that to make the community a better place so they understand the – um, importance of being good citizens. So it's just kind of another part of, uh, of being a good person and a good citizen that we teach to them. But it, it's, um, it's, you know, it's a simple routine. It really is, but they get into it and they learn all these life coping skills. They learn how to get along with each other. Uh, they learn how to, you know, everything from how to make their beds in the morning to how to write a job resume. All these things are important. So, uh, and a lot of them have never been taught these kind of things. Yeah. So if we get kids from every different kind of socioeconomic background through for whatever reason or not being successful, we take them, we give them a second chance, we turn their lives around and we turn them into, we make them into productive citizens and we give them all the tools that they need to uh, feel confident and to become successful. And we have about an 82% successful placement rate. So most of them are going to go into the workforce, continue their education, and then a small amount going to, into the military. Oh, that's great. I was going to ask that because I'm sure after they learn those skills, uh, they don't want it to stop and they definitely can apply it to wherever they end up in life yeah. uh, beyond uh, the program. Yeah. So that's yeah. great. Yeah. And we actually have recently started the Job Challenge Program, which is a free 22 week vocational. Uh, school. So after they graduate Youth Challenge, they can apply for Job Challenge program, and then they can go and earn a basic level industrial certification. Uh, f- again, totally at no cost. Mm. So a free program, twenty-two weeks. They have a little bit more. Uh, they have a little more privilege, mm-hmm. I guess uh, you could say than the a, a youth. Yeah, a Youth mm-hmm. Challenge program. Youth Challenge. When they come to Youth Challenge, we take away their cell phone technology, so mm-hmm. they're removed from all the distractions mm-hmm. that might have been. Um, aiding in, in, in them not being successful right. in the previous and I, environment. And I think that's important to say because uh, many of the, the distractions, as you say, are existing in our everyday life, and those mm-hmm. do present challenges uh, for all of us because we have to stay structured even – even us adults, you know, yeah. in our everyday yeah. life, it, it, what you're giving them is the structure that really helps to give a great foundation for the rest of their life. And sometimes families didn't get that and or they have more than one child and that becomes a challenge to do uh, themselves for that yeah. particular uh, troubled uh, teen. And so I think it's really great that you offer that opportunity and that structure makes a difference. And I'm really not surprised that the end result is that they would say more discipline because yeah. they see the benefit of having yeah, structure and having someone that they can go to as a resource as a confidant just being able to rely on Mm -hmm. what what we like to call the village really taking care of the the community so in your opinion what more can the community do or what should the community do when we do see youth that may be struggling or families that may need some assistance well it's easy just tell people about us you know encourage educate those people if you're listening right now again if you know someone 16 18 you might be that person or you know that person secondhand, tell people about us because we're changing lives. You know, this this is a really important, serious thing. Everyone knows um, how, how much our youth across the state, not only in New Orleans, but across the state, need this program and need that structure and need to be redirected onto a, a successful pathway because it's going to benefit all of us. All, these kids are our neighbors, you know, yeah. males, females, 16, 18, mm-hmm. if you're struggling. You're important. You're an important part of the system. You're an important part of our village. So we want to see you become that successful young man or young woman that uh, that you you have the capability to be. And again, 82% successful placement rate. That's huge. If you think about a traditional high school or other traditional educational setting, uh, and you know what, um, job you know the job market out yes. there. A lot of uh, industrial people and industrial leaders will hire youth challenge program graduates because they know they're going to be there on time every day. They know they're, they know they're going to say yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am. Uh, they know that they're hard workers and they have value and they've been taught all these skills. So I mean, we we are nationally recognized, you know, as in, especially in Louisiana, as having one of the top top programs in the nation throughout all forty programs. So uh, again. It's important that everyone in the community 
uh, educates each other and lets each other know how important this is. That 1-800-CAMP-KID number, the L-A-N-G-Y-C-P website, that's how you get involved. Again, we're going to be having interviews coming up in the New Orleans area, uh, one on March 11th and one on March 14th. But all that information is available online. But it's important, again, like you like you had asked, that everyone get involved and, and everyone uh, tell your neighbor about us and, and let them know that there's hope out there and there is a free pathway for these struggling young people. Yeah, and I think that word free uh, really takes on a, a larger meaning when you know that it's available for you. And I think what you all are providing as well is value because a lot of times yeah. it seems as though the young people who may be out there misguided and just misdirected with some of the activities they get involved in are not really valuing their life. They're not valuing no. the lives of the people they affect. And I think the program that you're speaking about really will also instill a lot of value so that they leave away feeling that they're not only important, but that somebody else is. And yeah. so yeah. they deserve to have a chance to live their life because we all have a, a path to follow. And I think it's just fantastic that uh, you're doing this and that you're a part of this. And how long have you been a, a part of this organization? Well, I've been with the National Guard Youth Challenge Program for about a year and a half. And I've had the privilege of seeing a lot of uh, cadets and students come in and out and graduate and being there at graduations and seeing those kids when they come into intake day and how tough of a process that is to win. You know, they have the family days about halfway through and they have graduation. So it's an honor to see these kids come through, uh, get that confidence, get those life coping skills, transform themselves, be rewarded in so many cases and go on and become better people, and successful what does it mean people. To you? What does it mean to you personally when you get to have that experience and you see the difference night and day with some of these young people? Well, I'm happy to be a part of it. You know, I'm obviously here talking to you and so many members of the community that are listening out there and, and I'm, I'm glad to uh, be a part of it. But it's not about me, you know. It's about all those those members of the community out there that can can uh, help these young people out, and uh, by telling them about the program and by by uh, keeping us top of mind, I guess you could say, as as a free alternative pathway out there for those kids that are struggling. Because every parent out there, every every person really knows someone either in their family or secondhand through a friend or another family member 16 to 18 they're struggling mm -hmm. they don't want to do their work you know we're a free pathway so it's important that everyone gets involved and let your neighbor know about it and one question uh, more is there a, uh, a policy about those you mentioned 82 percent for those that may not be as successful is there an opportunity for them to return depending on their age or so once you, once you graduate the program yeah we don't allow you to come back in for a few reasons um and if you've already graduated high school or you've already earned a high set, we don't allow you to come back so in. So by also. age, you probably have aged out of it, for one. Uh, yes, most of the time. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of, uh, again, a, everyone between 16 and 18, you can actually turn 19 in the program, mm -hmm. but you have to be between 16 and 18 by that first day of the program. Mm -hmm. But, um, again, we see a, a majority of those young people sure. being successful. They're going to be going to what's called the post-residential program where they have a mentor and a counselor mm -hmm. or a case manager rather. Mm -hmm. And they're going to make sure they're going to keep up with them on a uh, weekly to bi-weekly basis, make sure they're doing the right thing, make sure they have a plan, they're on the right path. Mm -hmm. And they're actually, when they're during our, during, during their 22 weeks, they're assigned a counselor. So mm -hmm. kind of, uh, we make sure their mental health is okay. Yeah. You know, we have a point of contact for these families if they have yeah. an emergency come up. So we remove them from their environment but they're still accessible. Well, you know? I love that because uh, you, you, that that's so huge right there when you said the support system because they need mm -hmm. it really and you're giving it to them in the beginning and almost throughout mm -hmm. their life. They're learning about support and they're gaining a lot of that confidence, but they're gaining people along the way who become a part of their circle yeah. of support. And so I wanted to ask you, how does the family feel? What do the families say once this program is over and they were the ones, you know, wondering what to do in the beginning? Oh, it's amazing. You know, uh, not only on the, uh, the first day of graduation when those families are crying and they're so excited but they're going to see that young person they're going to see the change that they made uh, they're going to walk with their shoulders a little bit taller up you know they're going to speak well they're going to say yes ma'am and no ma'am yes sir no sir um, and then they're going to know that they're gonna, they have the skills to go and be productive citizens in the real world so <clears throat> they see the results and they and they know 
what this program has done for them. And again, the, the best thing about it is this is at no cost. There's so many different programs out there that cost so much money to get these young people into. And, you know, we don't want them to end up in the court system or, or, or get picked up mm-hmm. or, or anything like that. You know, this is not, this is for kids who we don't want them to go there. We Absolutely. don't want them to Prevention. get to that point. Yeah, exactly. This yeah. is, this is a free step. Uh, to get you on the right path. I love it. Well, once again, this is uh, Stephen Hurley, Director of Public Relations and Recruiting for Louisiana National Guard Youth Challenge Program. Please share again the information they can uh, take to connect with you. Yes, yeah, so 1-800-CAMP-KID or LANGYCP.com. Our upcoming interviews on the North Shore in Covington are Wednesday, March 11th at 10 a.m. in Marrero, Saturday, March 14th at 10 a.m., both at the National Guard Armories. All that information, again, is available online at LANGYCP.com or on Facebook, Louisiana National Guard Youth Challenge Program. Wonderful. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you and learning all about what you do in the program. And uh, we know that many will take advantage of it. And so thank you so much for being our guest today. Yeah, Lisa, thank you so much for having me on. It was my privilege.